Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. What is up? Top King L123 here once again with another Hearts of Iron 4 Officer School video for you guys. In today's Officer School, I am covering everything you need to know regarding logistics and supplies in Hearts of Iron 4. In fact, I'm so sure this video will cover everything that you need to know. If I missed anything, please go in the comments section below and actually make fun of me for missing out on something that might have been really important. So, first off, this is very important for everyone to understand. At the current time of recording this video, Waking the Tiger is not available yet as the DLC. The only reason I'm mentioning that is because people are rumoring that in the Hearts of Iron 4 Waking the Tiger DLC that's supposed to drop, you'll be able to resupply units by air. I'm not entirely sure how accurate and true that is as of right now, but if it is true, you're not going to find any information with that in this video. This is going to cover all the other supplies you can possibly imagine other than that part. So, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so first thing you need to know is how to get into this map, which is one of the most important maps of the game. It's actually called the Supply Areas Map. Now, there's three ways of getting access. The first way is having a lot of troops in a province that can't support them, and you will get this little message that says, Bases in Low Supply. You're going to go ahead and left-click this and you'll have this little box pop up here. It'll go ahead and put you in this mode. You can see where all the supplies are, all where everything's coming from, all the supply routes on the way, pretty much just everything you need to know. The second way you can get into this is if you have the ability, press F4 on your keyboard, and that's the, uh, the hot key for it pretty much, and that will put you in the mode. If you can't get it to it by either way, that I just said, your final option is to go over in the bottom right hand corner and you'll see a supply area map mode. It's actually a uh, little gas can with an X on it and if you click that, it'll put you in this mode as well. Now, for the next part of this video, all your supply comes from your capital. No matter where you're at, the supply will always come directly from your capital. If you have troops over here in the Rhineland, they will go to your capital, to here, over to the Rhineland. If you have troops in Normandy, they will go from the capital to Normandy. If you're down in Africa, the supplies will go from your capital to a port, leave on a transport, which is why your transports always show for trade and supply, down to that port, and then they will begin resupplying your troops again. Now, by saying that, there's something really important everyone needs to understand, and not a lot of people really do. The supply, the way this works is it sends supply and it tries to keep the most supplies possible without any bottlenecks. Now this is a perfect example right here of what I'm talking about. Say you have troops fighting in Spain, right? Well, if you have troops fighting down here in Spain, you can see that for some reason out of Paris, it goes over to Bordeaux and then comes down. It doesn't just drive straight to the area. But if you go over here, it will go ahead over here to the 109 and then go down. That's because there's no other way to get supplies into this place. The AI in this game will save as much supplies as it possibly can. Now here's how you fix this. So we have instant construction on right now. And whenever we upgrade this in a few moments, we have this area maxed out. Now when you upgrade a province for the supplies, it will help your area out pretty much all around. So we have 104, 109, 114. Actually none of the other areas went up. so. Just went up to 112 though. If we upgrade this area, it goes to 123. Now, the next part is something very important that not a lot of players understand. Depending on where you start, your province that, um, or your area that goes ahead and has your capital in it, will send the supplies, but your capital may not have the max infrastructure it needs to actually deploy as many supplies as possible. So, we've already upgraded these two areas and it didn't really do much. So now we're going to upgrade our capital, which is what we should have done in the first place, and 123 and 112 goes up to 216 and 214. And now you can see it will go all the way around and avoid this province completely and try to go over here to send the supplies out. And then if we upgrade this all the way, we have 215 supplies. Now what will happen is it will send 226 here, but since it can only support up to 216 uh, supply, it will stop sending past 216. So here it will stop at 214. So even though this province here is 215, it will only send 214 and then it will continue on down here. It can only support up to 34. So you will only be able to get 34 supply in this area. Now let's talk really quick about what the number on the left hand side compared to the right hand side means. 
So over here we have an area which is perfectly fine. It just means that there are 12 supply units, or I like to call it supply units. It basically means that on the left hand side is how much supplies are currently being consumed in the area. The right side is how much is the max the area can support being consumed essentially, like what it can allow through it. So there's a couple ways you can help your divisions out a lot. So if you know you're going to be fighting in Africa, you want low supply for units. Tanks and usually motorized require a lot more, even though we have four tanks here, that's 0.80. We have two tanks, four motorized units, that's 0.86. Horses, they're not that much. Mountaineers, they're a decent amount. But then we have just regular infantry, which is kind of bang for your buck in terms of supply. So if we took away this artillery, it would go down to 0.63 for just infantry. And then if we add a logistics company, that will take down our supply use too. So we'll be down to 0.56. So let's just say we had that number down at 0.50 and one of these provinces could hold up to 50 supply. Then basically you could fit 100 infantry divisions of that template in the area because that's how much supply it can hold up to. So now that we got that explained, let's go ahead and talk about how to supply your units away from the main islands. So what will end up happening is your supply will come from your capital, go around and try to get to a port. Now this is a perfect example right here from earlier. I'm just gonna go and upgrade that. And now you can see it'll go through the way, it's pretty much trying to save as much supply as it possibly can to send the most possible. So now let's talk about how you can get supply down here. Cause we're sending 215 and we've got only a max of 34 that we can support over here in this port. And as you can tell, when zooming out, it shows the map, it shows it coming from Paris down directly under it over to the port and then comes down to here. So first thing most people would probably assume is go ahead and max out your infrastructure, correct? No, that did absolutely nothing. See, here's why this does nothing. Your supplies are coming in from the port. The infrastructure, the area matters a little bit and I'll swap them over to here to show you, but the infrastructure in the port matters the most. So since it's coming into the port, think about it like this, it comes into the port how much can the port hold and then how much can it offload on land so we're going to go ahead and max out our naval base here actually i did that wrong max out our naval base here i'm sorry open it back up 34 goes to 40. so let's go ahead and move all of our troops over here now to this little area and we're probably gonna get rhineland here in a few moments since the ai is probably going to do that come on get over there all right, that's probably enough because it's actually going down a little bit. <laughs> so now let me show you the port. Once it's maxed out, it'll actually probably send a lot more supply now. Okay, 42. And then we upgrade the infrastructure. And that 42 jumps up to 55. See what I'm talking about here? So basically, it all depends on your infrastructure and your ability to fight. Now, I just prefer to do it this way because if you if you do it like this, okay? If you go into infrastructure, you can see you have two different areas here, right? And that's what I had to do. I had to build in two separate areas. Now, if you go over here to supply area, you can just manually hover over the little logistics or the uh, infrastructure, and it will just upgrade all that you need in that area. See, instead of having to build one at a time, it'll actually pop up the number for the entire area, which is 20. So that means it was building two areas up of 10. That's how I like doing it. And then usually it will only have, if I remember correctly on this, uh, in fact, let's test this really quick here just to make sure, hold on. Instant construction off. If I remember correctly, nope, never mind. I thought it combined them both, but you can see what it does. It starts working on both of them to get the whole area up. Now let's talk about protecting your supply convoys. Now a lot of people don't realize that the convoys come out of your ports whether you want them to or not when they're supplying troops far away. If you're Germany, you really don't have to worry about this until you invade Africa. But if you're France fighting in Africa, if you're Italy fighting really anywhere other than your home island, you're the United States, Canada. If you're not fighting on main territory, you need to worry about your convoys. Now, let's go ahead down here as an example. All right, if we go over here and look, 
these little blue lines that or the little lines that come out this thing that's showing the supply see supply area it's actually got one boat going over there right now to supply you can kind of follow this back the little yellow line and it gets really difficult to follow but we can tell all of our supply comes from this port that's going to vietnam and it's really important to guard these because otherwise if someone has convoy uh destruction on or the convoy rating uh selection if you're on a ship uh or the enemy's got a ship i'm sorry submarines they will start losing convoys fast and then the supplies that the convoys were transporting will be lost you need to produce more and then if they keep sinking them you'll lose more and this is a reason why if you're playing the united states and for example attacking japan you don't want to just send what a lot of play, uh, players do and just send ships all around japan this will work great for cutting them off but any ships they still have out in the pacific roaming around they'll start raiding your convoys and you'll start losing ships very very fast all right and one other thing in this video as well that i need to mention supplies through the convoys will only go through a country or an island once so for example here if there was no way to get across here and the island was totally cut off the convoys would not go to here come out and then come around into a port so if you guys are encircled in through here and say for example you have no other allies in this area okay united kingdom has lost this port and you've lost this port over here uh, the UK has captured it, Spain owns it, so you can't get boats and transports through there anymore. And say for example you've lost West Africa. You may have these ports right here, but if Germany owns France and Vichy France and you're by yourself down here, you won't get supply. Because they'll have you pretty much cut off without even needing to attack you, and then your troops will just pretty much die of starvation. Uh, and one other thing on this video that I was going to cover that not a lot of our people have covered when doing these kind of tutorials is how to use supply to your advantage in terms of resupplying units that are totally encircled. So I said I was going to show you guys how to do it from right here, which is what I'm going to go ahead and do. Let's get our troops over here really quick. Not really quick. They're kind of slow. <laughs> and all right. So let's say, for example, we're in a situation here. We have control of the uh, the uh, naval area, right? I think it's the western... Okay, so let's say, for example, we have control over the Mediterranean, right? Uh, UK is over here. Uh, we have the port still and everything, right? Or really anywhere. You can do this even in Normandy with naval invasions if you want. After If you're the allies and you've invaded, you can do this over there too. So let's go ahead and show you an example. If your troops are totally cut off in here... Once they've either landed in a naval invasion, or if they're cut off and they have no other ports or anything, you can actually build a naval uh, dockyard on any province you wish, and you can just build up your dockyard. And it takes a little while to build these, but April 24th, so you have around a month. So if you do a bunch of different naval invasions, you can actually really easily uh, start resupplying a unit because the AI in a lot of people multiplayer will just guard the coastline and that really makes it a little bit easier to break through. I've seen some players guard a coastline and then have another division set up to guard exclusively ports. So they usually double up troops on ports but using this you can say for example come in on Normandy right here, invade, build a fort or a uh, naval dockyard and then get supplies in through that way. So uh, one other thing as well, this really does, this does not help you. I've, I understand a lot of people are worried about this or have seen this and usually go down this tree thinking it'll help them. It says out of supply minus 10%. That doesn't decrease the number of your uh, supply you're being, uh, this being used by your division. The only thing that drops that is a logistics company, which helps out a little bit because it only takes, I think 10% away, right? Yep. 10% away from whatever you're using. So all right, guys, that was it. That was everything I could possibly think of. Hopefully, this video helped you guys out. This is like the 15th time we're trying to record this video, and uh, hopefully it helped you guys out. Now, like I said, if I missed anything, and I mean anything regarding supply, it would mean a lot to me if you guys would go in the comment section below, tell me what I missed so we can help people understand how to fix this, how to do this the correct way in the future, and so on, especially once the uh, Waking the uh, Tiger dlc comes out that'll be really appreciated all right guys thank you so much for watching hopefully it helped you guys out i will see you guys next time 
stay awesome.